Have you ever gotten that feeling like you were being watched, but there was no one around? If so, have you ever experienced this in your own home? Many believe this ability to sense when we're being watched is something of a sixth sense we have. And this is exactly what happened to the Dunham family. After moving into a new home in Deltona, Florida with their 12-year-old son, infant daughter, and another baby on the way, Ed and Beth Dunham couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. As night fell, unseen eyes watched them from the shadows. Unbeknownst to them, their new home harbored a chilling secret. It was infested with ghosts, turning the Dunham's dream home into a living nightmare. But could they reclaim their house? Or would they end up fleeing in the night? Welcome back to Avery After Dark. I'm your host, Avery Ross. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you tuned in for today's episode. We have a very spooky ghost story today. I hope you're ready. It's a true case and it's a doozy. Thanks so much for subscribing to this podcast. Give this video a like and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on an episode. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's case. In Central Florida, halfway between Orlando and Daytona Beach, sits Deltona. Deltona is a vibrant city, now one of the largest in the county, known for its family-friendly communities. Deltona itself has somewhat of a mysterious history. We know that Florida is home to some of the oldest settlements in America. St. Augustine, founded in the 1560s by Spanish explorers, is recognized as the oldest continuously inhabited European established settlement in the continental United States. Florida played a significant role in America's early history. Its strategic location and natural resources made it a focal point for early explorers and settlers. And legend says that years and years ago, explorers traveled to the area searching for a fountain of everlasting life, aka the fountain of youth, which allegedly restores the youth of anyone who drinks or bathes in its waters. The legend became especially well-known when Juan Ponce de Leon, the first governor of Puerto Rico, supposedly traveled to Florida in the early 1500s in search of it, believing it was there, somewhere. And as legends go, some claim that he found it, but others say, nah, just an old spooky story. But regardless, explorers from all over traveled to the area in hopes of two finding the mysterious fountain of life. But for many, all they found were dark, swampy waters filled with crocodiles. And for some, brutal and harsh deaths. With its history, many believe the ghosts of these explorers still haunt the town. And this brings us to the Dunham family. In summer 2001, Ed and Beth Dunham were in the market for a bigger house for their growing family. The couple had a young daughter, Emily, who was just a baby and a 12-year-old son named Matt. Matt was Ed's son from a previous marriage and stayed with Ed and Beth on weekends. Ed, who had retired from a career as a U.S. Army Ranger, now worked in real estate, specifically renovating houses. While working at a job in Deltona, Ed mentioned to some coworkers that he was looking for a home in the area. He was excited when the man he was working for told him about a particular house nearby that had just hit the market, a big place with a huge yard at a remarkably reasonable price. This man told Ed that the house had just recently become available and suggested Ed bring his wife out to look at the place. So they did, Ed feeling like they needed to jump right on this before someone else snatched the place up. The next day, the Dunhams made the trip to check it out and when they pulled up, they couldn't believe they had the right house. They had to double check that they got the address right because this place was huge and gorgeous. It was a very large house in a great neighborhood, no less, with equally beautiful homes surrounding it. Ed brought his son Matt along when they toured it and Matt immediately said that he loved it, calling it picture perfect. They looked around the exterior and it was stunning and it was now time to check out the inside of the house. And this is where things get weird. The Dunhams walk inside to find that the previous owner hadn't moved out any of his belongings. It looked like he had just up and left the house. There was a plate of half-eaten food still sitting on the kitchen counter, spoiled items 
still in the refrigerator. The house had been mysteriously abandoned. Why the sudden exit? This is very out of the ordinary. In most cases, when a home is put up for sale, by the time it hits the market, it's typically cleaned out, decluttered. Sometimes a house will be completely emptied. Other times, furniture and decor is staged in a way that's pleasing for potential buyers. But this was not the case here. The past owner left all of his belongings behind. Now, what would make a person up and leave everything? Just walk out the front door and never return? Beth and Ed find it gross and bizarre, but the man who suggested looking at the property did state that the previous owner said the new owners could have anything they want inside. He didn't want any of it. Also offering to pay whoever moved in to box up and clean the house. Very strange situation. The couple talk it over and for the price and amount of house they would be getting, they ultimately decided to say yes. They figured they could rent to own and in their price range, this was by far the best deal, best neighborhood, biggest house. They hoped it would be great once they got it cleaned up. Within the next week, the Dunhams move in and at first they're really happy with their decision to take the property. But Beth said after they got settled in, that changed, saying she began to feel uneasy in the house, like she was being watched, feeling this both inside and also like someone was watching her from outside in the woods behind the home. As she moved through the house, she would look out the back windows and just couldn't shake that feeling that someone was out there. Ed was very understanding and told Beth he would put up some blinds. A few nights later, Ed and Beth were asleep in their room when Ed suddenly woke up out of a deep sleep to the smell of smoke. Fearing that the house was on fire, he woke Beth up, telling her to grab their daughter Emily in the next room, yelling, fire. Ed runs down the hallway, trying to locate the smell. When he passes one of the bedrooms and sees a man sitting on the edge of the bed, smoking a cigar, Ed started screaming at the man, saying, get out, get out of my house. Ed turns around to see his wife running down the hall towards him. And when he looks back, the man with the cigar was gone. Beth's asking, where's the fire? After a few moments, the couple realized there wasn't a fire and there was no sign of that man anywhere. Ed wondered if he was losing his mind. Was he imagining things? Did someone have a key to the house and break in? Who did he see? After seeing the man with the cigar, Ed wasn't sure what was going on, who the man was, or if he was losing his mind entirely. And this case is really interesting to me because typically women and or children are usually the first to see or experience the paranormal activity. But in the Dunham's case, Ed, the father, was the first to really see anything. Shortly after moving in, Beth found out that she was pregnant. And although this was unexpected, the couple was excited. But this put all the more pressure on them to make the house work. They really needed this house now, with a young baby, a baby on the way. As time went on and as the pregnancy progressed, Beth began taking more naps during the day when she would put Emily down to sleep. One of these afternoons, Beth had been lying down for a while and half asleep, she got that feeling again, like she was being watched. She slowly opened her eyes to see an elderly woman standing in the doorway of her bedroom, glaring at her. Beth screams, jumps up and runs over to the phone to call for help and watches as the older woman disappears. Beth immediately calls Ed and tells him to come home, telling him there's someone in the house. After arriving home, Beth is completely frantic and unsettled, Ed trying to calm her down. He asks her what the woman looked like, and Beth told him. And to her surprise, Ed starts smiling. He believed that this was possibly his mom, who had passed away from cancer years earlier. And initially, Ed's excited, thinking maybe his mother was there, watching out for the couple. But Beth did not agree and felt that the elderly woman was there to scare her. The energy didn't feel protective, it felt ominous. 
This was not a visit from a loving mother, and the strange things continued inside the house. With Ed out at work all day, Beth was home alone and would walk into the kitchen to find all the cabinets opened. She would hear strange noises coming from empty rooms. On one occasion, she heard someone turning on the shower in the bathroom to walk in and find no one there, saying she felt like she was living in the scenes from movies. Her life had become something out of a horror film. As time went on, Beth began to avoid the house as much as possible, leaving with Emily throughout the day, going on really long walks. She didn't want to be in the house. Ed and Beth both realized that their home is haunted by someone or something. Ed saw the man with the cigar. Beth had seen the elderly woman in the doorway. And at this point, both of them felt such a sense of unease while inside the house, like the ghosts were always watching them. But Ed doesn't know what to do, so he has an idea. He believes if he gets loud, angry, and starts screaming at the spirits to leave his family alone, it will make the activity stop. But it didn't stop. The following weekend, Ed's son Matt comes to stay with the couple and it didn't take long for the entities to begin toying with him. Matt was in the family room reading one afternoon when he heard a deep, low voice call his name from the next room. Believing it was his dad, Matt got up and went into the kitchen, asking his father why he was calling him. Ed said he didn't. Matt, just like Beth, began spending more time outside as it was growing more uncomfortable. In an interview, Matt said the house had a dreadful feeling, and he could feel that things were getting tense. That weekend, late one night, Matt was inside, sitting alone watching TV, and he too began to feel very strange. He looked up to see a dark figure pass by the family room. Matt was terrified and was glad to go back to his mom's house that Monday. At this point, Every member of the family has seen or experienced the ghostly activity, and Beth noticed that something was going on with baby Emily, telling Ed that something was wrong. It seemed like she wasn't getting any sleep. A few nights later, Ed and Beth woke up to the sound of someone being dragged loudly down the hallway outside their bedroom. The couple jumped up, Ed checked the hallway, but there was no one there. At a loss and desperate for help, Ed gets online and connects with the Daytona Beach Paranormal Research Group and begins speaking with the founder, a woman named Dusty Smith. They talk and Dusty finds Ed's story to be believable. And a few nights later, Dusty and her crew come to the house to investigate. There, Dusty interviews Ed and Beth and the research group sets up their equipment in hopes of recording evidence of the haunting such as devices that measure EMF, which are invisible areas of energy that are often associated with paranormal activity. They set up to measure for temperature drops and recorders for EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. Ed and Beth hope that this group can help whatever or whoever is inside their house move on once and for all. Wishful thinking. About 10 minutes into their investigation, as Dusty is asking Ed and Beth about the activity they have seen and experienced, the group suddenly hears a loud banging on the wall. They begin to move around the home. Ed walks the group from room to room, showing them exactly where they've encountered the spirits. They also learn that Ed will yell and scream at the ghosts and warn him that although this can be a natural instinct, especially for Ed, who was an army ranger, the spirits may actually be feeding on the negative energy, the screaming, thus making it worse. The investigation goes into the early morning hours. After they wrap up, Dusty and her crew take all they've gathered and tell Ed and Beth they'll get back with them. Dusty said for her team they required three separate pieces of evidence from the haunting that all back each other up in order for them to move forward. Ed and Beth were at a breaking point. Ed would be at work all day and come home to see Beth on the front doorstep with the baby. She didn't want to be in the house at all, and things were growing more tense by the day. 
When reviewing the EVP recordings from the Dunham's house, Dusty stated that numerous voices were picked up, what sounded like more than a dozen spirit voices, and that concerned her. Through her work, Dusty looks into property records and files from the local courthouse on the Dunham's home. And in these records, Dusty sees that the house has changed hands a lot and often been sold for much less than nearby homes. Thinking back to the previous owner who just up and left everything, that's really starting to make sense now. Dusty believes that the man with the cigar and the elderly woman were both past owners and both died in the home. Also, in her research, she found that Native Americans considered the land that Deltona sits on to be sacred land. In the following weeks, Dusty and her team do their own cleansing of the home using holy water and a Christian prayer. But Beth said that baby Emily seems to be very disturbed by something in the home. Beth telling Dusty that she seemed tired. So Dusty has an idea. She said she will set up one of her video cameras to face Emily's crib, which had since been moved into Beth and Ed's bedroom, to see if they could see anything. Beth says okay, and after a day or two, Dusty comes back to collect the footage. When she sits down to review it, she's horrified. She said the footage showed that after Beth would lay Emily down for a nap and leave the room, she began to hear an entity call out for Emily. Dusty said the voice was neither male or female, and it sounded demonic. Then, Dusty claimed she saw a darkish figure walk over to Emily's crib and lean over towards the baby. Dusty immediately jumps in her car and heads straight to the Dunhams. When she gets there, she's frantic, telling Ed and Beth that she believed a darker entity in the home, an inhuman spirit, was targeting Emily as she slept in her crib. And that was it. Ed and Beth packed up and left in the middle of the night, never returning to the home. Ed saying they escaped the house, barely. They stayed with Beth's parents until eventually finding a new home in a nearby town. There, Beth had a healthy boy, and the family finally began to feel peace again. They were also grateful that baby Emily had no memories of what transpired in the house, growing up to be a very happy kid. Ed, being a retired army ranger, wanted to protect his home and his family from the entities inside. He wanted to reclaim the home. He wasn't going to leave without a fight. But in the end, he said he realized it doesn't matter how tough or how strong you are, he realized he wasn't going to win against the evil in the home. So much about that elderly, glaring woman and the man with the cigar remains a mystery. Dusty believed that they were past owners of the house. I saw other rumors online that the man was murdered inside that home, but I couldn't find anything conclusive. But why they were there, what unfinished business they had inside the home, is in question. There's also a lot of mystery surrounding the darker entity within the home that was targeting little Emily. Beth also said she found it strange that after she learned she was pregnant, that's when the activity really started to ramp up. After everything, the Dunhams never got clarity on how or why this happened to them. But sometimes, that's how it goes. But one thing was cleared up for the couple. They now knew why that previous resident left the house in such a hurry. And this is a good little lesson for all of us here. If we're ever in the market for a new house, but see that the prior owner mysteriously up and left everything, including a plate of half-eaten food on the counter, run. Would love to know your thoughts and theories on today's case. Drop them in the comments here on YouTube. And be sure to let me know what places and cases you'd like to see next on the show. Thanks so much for subscribing and following along wherever you tune in to Avery After Dark. Next episode, I've got so much more mystery coming your way. Until then, I'm Avery Ross, and this is Avery After Dark.